Amen. My name is Apostle Alex. Now today, I want to talk about he proclaimed recovery of sight to the blind. Jesus proclaimed recovery of sight to the blind. You like it or not, dear children of God, the truth remains that people are corrupt and sinful. That is the truth. Never pretend that a man can be holy without God. No man can be so good without God. No man can be good without God. Even trying to practice goodness and indeed living a, a life of goodness and doing good without God is filth rag. Because still inside a man is corruption. There are sins that cannot be seen by a man in a man. Now, who will resolve those sins? Who will save man from those sins? They are there. They are in your heart. The things that come out of your heart, that is why Jesus has come. Now, man is sinful because man fall from God. And the Bible says in the book of Romans 3.23, is a scripture we all know, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. All. Me and you and that person has sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. What this means is we have fallen short of partaking into the divine greatness of God. We have fallen short of sharing. We have fallen short of partaking into the divine greatness of God. Because the glory of God is the greatness of God. It's the divine nature of of God. But I want you to take note, Kwamba, tumeumbwa kuishi katika uwepo wa Mungu. Na ndiyo sababu Mungu ametuumba kwa umbo lake. We are created to live in his divine presence forever. Man was created to coexist in God's presence forever. What you are seeing, the man of today is not the original man because the man of today is corrupted. Sin has changed the original shape of man. Now, have you ever imagined tafakari tumpendwa? Kama Adamu hange tenda dhambi na hawa. Dunia ingeka na mnagani leo. If Adam and Eve never sinned in the garden of Eden. Can you imagine what and how the world will be? I believe that all the creation of God will be perfect just as they were perfect from the beginning when he created the heavens and the earth. I believe so. Kila kiumbe cha mungu kiko sawa vile alivyo umba ulimwengu wa kwanza. Kama adamu na hawa, hawa kukubaliana kufanya dhambi, ninaamini kwamba kila kitu kingekuwa perfect vile mungu aliumba ulimwengu mara ya kwanza. Do you believe that? I believe that as God came to visit man every cool of the hour, God will still be coming down 
and the whole world will be under one place called the Garden of Eden. I believe so. Because the earth is not big to God. To God, the earth is just a garden. Amen? Because God has created the universe and even the earth, those who have done science, the earth is just one of the, the what? The spheres. The planet. Thank you for helping me preach. So the earth is just one of the planets and it is not the biggest one. In fact, it's among the smallest planets. There are bigger ones. And that is still the creation of God. So all of us, the billions of people on earth, will be under one garden. And being ruled by only one father. And we will be having fun with angels and beings of heaven. Today, we will not be worried that we are going to go to hell because we are not obedient to God. Imagine today, I will be having fun with my great, 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 a thousand grandfather. Yani, baba, alieza baba, nakaza baba, nakaza baba, nakaza baba, angekua bado ako, nako yang kama mimi, na tuna have fellowship na yeye. Yes, because there will be no death. Is it not so? Yes. Kwa hivyo viyumbe vyote vya dunia, kwa sababu mungu aliambia mwanadamu, multiply. Multiplication will still be going on, and there will be nothing lacking. And there will be nobody dying. And of course, that is the life in heaven. In heaven, people don't die. There is no death in heaven. People are living forever. In fact, people believe that people like Jeremiah are old men with beards, white beards. King like King David. Men with white beards. And when you go to heaven, you see an old man who says, Hallelujah. No. They are young people with refreshed flesh and they look very vibrant. Young. Younger than me. And if they have white hair, the white hair is the glory of God. If you have white hair, say amen. The world doesn't love white hair. But in the kingdom of God, white hair is the glory of God. Somebody say the glory. So count the white hair you have is the glory of God. So don't cover the white hair with easy black. You are covering the glory. Leave it. Unasema, pastor unajitetea kwa sababu yako ni white. I don't care. This is the glory. Yeah. Oh, how will men look old? But you are getting old anyway. Oh, ni taka mzesi unazeeka. Very soon, hata ukipaka is black, people will see wrinkles. People will still see you are getting old. Unatembea pole pole. Migui nakataa kutembea, unakohoa kohoa. Very soon. So, when old age begins to set in, accept the reality. Come on. Kubali hali yako kwamba unaondokea ulimwengu very soon. <laughs> yeah. The more you get old, the more you should realize that you are about to live. <laughs> the, your flight is about to take off. <laughs> Am I preaching a bad gospel? But I just feel sad. Can you imagine that as I give birth to my children, my children will be enjoying that glory and we will still be going to visit the, great, the grandfather of the oldest and he will still be happy. Some of you don't know even the grandfather down to the fourth generation. Umujui. Unajua tu baba yako. The generation ya sahi inajuanga baba peke yake. Mama na baba. Kwa ki extend sana grandmother and grandfather. From there, they don't know. Sasa, I imagine in those days, if Adam never sinned, tungekua tunakaa katika garden of Eden. Eh? Tunakaa na 
na na na lion nasema mr lion roar again i love you roaring mr lion let us go for a walk and the lion will be talking and saying yes mr luamba but is it not true the bible say that adam had a conversation with who with a snake so that means in those days even animals talked walikuwa naongea Siku hizi walifungwa hawaongei they act by crushing men <laughs> because of sin. We will not be worried today. We will not be worried who is poor and rich. Today people are worried. Nani tajiri? Eh? Hapa tu vile watu wamekaa wanaomba Mungu awafanye wakuwe tajiri. Nobody will be worried about that. Nobody will be having a big car and another one has a bicycle. We will all be equal. The one with a big car will still be okay. The one with I don't know if bicycles will be there. But we will be equal. The Bible says the manner that God gave the children of Israel. Ule alichukua mingi, alichukua kidogo. Na ule alichukua kidogo, alichukua mingi. Wote walikuwa sawa. It will be a very perfect place. It will be a place where we will not again be fearful. But It is not so people of God man sinned against God and this earth was changed and it was replaced and I can call it has been made a place of deep darkness the earth has become a place of deep darkness and we can read the book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 deep dark, darkness has covered the earth but deep darkness has covered the people behold the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people so the earth has become a place where darkness the kingdom of darkness is operating and majority of people are living in darkness watu wengi wanakaa kwenye giza hili na ninaposema giza ni watu ambao wamejitenga na Mungu. Kwa hivyo unapoishi maisha haya, ni vizuri utambue kwamba kuna Mungu roho ambaye aliumba mwanadamu na Mungu huyu anaongea na wanadamu kwamba mahali mupo ni mahali panagiza. Lakini katikati ya ile giza nimeleta nuru yangu. Lakini ni yule atakayekubali kuondokea giza aingie kwenye nuru huyu ataokolewa. Bana Isa sifiwe. Kwa hivyo humanity is covered with deep darkness. Na wakati tunaongea juu ya deep darkness inamaanisha kwamba macho ya watu yamefunikwa. Wakati watu hawa wamekata uhusiano na Mungu, macho yao yamefunikwa. Haimaanishi hawana macho, wako na macho lakini hawawezi kuona. They cannot make good of their lives because their eyes are covered. Na nataka kuongea juu ya mystery fulani hapa. I want to talk about mystery of the eye. Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 22, he says this. The lamp of the body is the eye. Taa ya mwili ni macho. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body be full of will be full of the light kwa hivyo macho yako akiwa sawa basi mwili wako wote utakuwa na nuru lakini 23 nasema but if your eye is bad somebody say bad kwa hivyo kuna macho mabaya your whole body will be full of darkness macho yako yakiwa mabaya mwili wako wote utajagiza If therefore the light that is in you is darkness how great is the darkness Kwa hivyo kile ambacho kina determine nuru ndani ya mwanadamu ama giza ni macho ya mwanadamu You are getting it What determines darkness that you carry is your eyes or the light of god that you carry is your eyes because your eyes 
is the lamp of the body. It opens the light. Kwa hivyo Biblia inasema kama una macho mabaya if you have bad eyes that means your eyes cannot see because mtu akisema macho mabaya inamaanisha hayaoni. Kazi ya macho ni kuona. Na yanapoona yanaelekeza mwili mahali na kuona vitu. If the eye is bad it means the eye cannot see well. And if the eye cannot see well it only translates into a darkness in your eyes. So if the eye is bad, the eye is full of darkness, then darkness has filled your body. And if your eyes, which are supposed to bring light, has darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, God is not talking about the real darkness, the, the real eye, the, the outside eye. Even though, Buana Anatomia, the physical eye, and the eye attached to our body, to speak about a spiritual eye, so when a man cannot see, that means this man cannot experience the greatness of God. A man who is blind cannot experience any beauty. Mtu ambaye ni kipofu, hawezi kuona kitu kizuri. Hata umuvalishe suti, umuvalishe umpatie gold and silver, hajui zinakana mnagana. Sini ukweli? Ukempa pesa, hajui ni pesa ngapu mempatia. Mtu huyu, anahitaji msaada wa mtu mwingine. Kwa hivyo mtu huyu anaezaibiwa na hajui ni nani amemuibia na mtu anakuja kumuibia kwa urahisi kwa sababu mtu huyu hana uwezo wa kutambua na hata hana uwezo wa kupigana na adui wake kwa sababu macha yake yamefungwa. So a man who is blind lives a risky life. Kwa hivyo mtu ambaye ni kipofu akitembea kwenye barabara Anaweza gongwa na gari anytime because hajui halioni gari. Mtu kama ni kipofu akifika kwenye maji mingi hata jua ataingia ndani ya maji na anguke na afi. Anaweza kuanguka kwenye moto kwa sababu hajui uko pale. Hajui kwamba kuna shida mbele yake kwa sababu haoni. Mtu huyu amepungukiwa na ile kuelewa na kue, ku, ku, uzuri wa maisha. The advantages of life are not in him. And this is what the devil has made many people. The devil has blanketed. He has blinded people's lives. So that he may rule and govern them. The devil has blinded people's lives. That if they don't see, they cannot get it. How is he kupata kile hawoni? So many Christians cannot see. Many people cannot see. And when I talk about seeing, I'm talking about the manifestations of God. Na nataka kukufunza kitu kwamba, before God will give you something, he causes you to see it first. Take note. Ukitaka kujua vile mungu anafanya kazi kwenye biblia, look at how God walked with men. What he used to do. Before God will reveal his manifestation and his reality to man, he will cause this man to see it ahead. He will want this man to see it ahead. And then, he will bring it to pass. So God doesn't like blindness. God loves people to see. When you see, then you receive. Bana Yesu asifiwe sana. Watu wengi hawapigani vita vya kiroho, kwa sababu macho yao ya kiroho ya mefunikwa. Lakini tunapohona katika maandiko, Hata tukianza kwa mfano tu kidogo Mungu anaambia Jeremiah mara mingi sana katika kusoma kitabu cha Jeremiah we can see even Jeremiah 1:11 Anamwambia Jeremiah what do you see Jeremiah 1:11 what does it say Moreover the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying Jeremiah what do you see And you will see that statement in that book several times when you read prophetic books, you will see many of these statements from God. When you go back to Zechariah, Zechariah 5.2, there are many statements of the same, but I'm just choosing some particular ones. Again, God says this, and he said to me, what do you see? Then when you go to Amos, Amos 8.2, these are prophets, and many of them. Amos 8.2, he says, and he said to Amos, what do you see? Amen? <laughs> and when we come to our Lord Jesus Christ, in Bethesda, 
he met a blind man. Then he touched that blind man and he asked him, what do you see? The man said, I see people moving like what? Trees. The Lord no, knew that vision is not complete. He touched the eyes again and made the man to look up. And he said, what do you see? Now the man had a very restored, clear vision. Praise the name of the Lord. So, when God deals with a man, he will want you to see first. God insists on aspect of us seeing the things we need in life before he makes them real. So the condition to your problem is because you don't see. You're blind. There are people whose blessings are just right here, but they can't see. Somebody says seeing is believing. Isn't it? But it, this seeing is not the physical one. It's the spiritual one. It's the seeing by faith. Now, let us see a few examples. Now, when God meets Abraham, the story of Abraham, you know, but in this particular case, in Abraham 13, in Genesis, I mean, Genesis 13, your pardon? Genesis 13, verse 14. Abraham had just disconnected with a lot after a dispute. Then the Lord told Abraham, lift your eyes and now look from the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. Huh? There is a secret here. It is what you see that God gives you and even to your generation. Kwa hivyo, kumbe ni kile unaona. Ndiyo mungu hata kupatia na hata kizazi chako. Kama we ni mzazi na we ni kipofu, hawoni. Hata kizazi chako, kitapofushwa na kutoona kwako. Mateso unaona familia na pitenu kwa sababu wazazi wao hawa kuona. Walikufa vipofu. Na kwa sababu hiyo watoto wao wanaka kwenye giza lile lile. Kwa hivyo mzazi ambaye anapokea nuru ya bwana na anze kuona kile mungu amemwandalia anafungua njia ya kizazi chake na watoto wake. Na tangaza kwa jina la Yesu, mungu akufungue macho yako. Uanze kuona kila amekuandalia. Usiwa mzazi ambaye utakufa kwenye giza na uwache watoto kwenye giza. There are ministers who depend on men. Kama mwanadama aja wasaidia, they think they cannot make it. That is what they are seeing. It is what you see that God will give you. The magnitude of your eyesight, it is the magnitude of God's blessing in your life. Kama macho yako ya taona mbali, God will fill the space. Na kama ya taona hapa, God will not extend it further. It is your position, your responsibility to see. And it is the responsibility of God to cause the things to happen that you have seen. Ni chokumu lako kuona. Na usha ona, mungu watatimiza kilo meona. Kwa hivyo unaomba, eh buwana, mungu ni one, haku one. Wewe ndiyo unaona. Unaona uponyaji, uone kwanza. Ninaona uponyaji wangu, mungu analeta uponyaji. Ninaona kuinuliwa kwangu, mungu analeta kuinuliwa. Ninaona ushindi wangu, Mungu analeta ushindi. Ninaona kuinuliwa kwangu, ninainuliwa na Bwana. Ninaona nguvu zangu, ninapokea nguvu. Ninaona nikishinda vita, unapokea ushindi. Unaona nini dada yangu ndugu yangu? What are you seeing? Are you seeing a failure? Forgive me. God will not give you success. God will give you what you have seen. Watu wengi hapa, wanafikiria, ninaona Pastor Alex. Pastor Alex cannot help you. He is only a bridge. He is only a facilitator. But there is a God. Before you come here, you must see the things you need. 
Mimi na uenda ni sijue shida zenu zote. Because ni kianza kwe sabu mtu moja na shida amzini. Ni taweza kujua zote. No, uh, my ability has limits. Only God's ability can see all your problems and they are very little to him. So what are you seeing in your situation? Wakati umeyona, ukikuja mbele yangu, nikisema in the name of Jesus, receive. You take it and go. Are you seeing yourself getting a job? Yes. But if you are seeing, why are you saying you can never be employed? That means you are seeing is wrong. Your eye is full of darkness. Kama unawana mume wako ni mumbwa. Then you are seeing is full of darkness. And how great is that darkness? How taona maname utaona mumbwa. Kama unawana mtoto wako, vile tumambiwa na mchungaji hapa. Unaita mtoto mjinga. How taona mwerevu utaona mjinga. Kama unaona mimi kweli hata naweza inuka kwa familia yetu watu walikuwa nakufa hivi hata mimi nimekaribia usitarajie kupita hiyo miaka jipange pia nawe unakufa Lazima injili ya Mungu tuhubiri kwa ukweli bwana Wakati mwingine tunaambia watu unabarikiwa na anaenda huko ana yeye anaendelea ku confess amekufa Sasa anapokufa anafikiria pastor ni waongo sio waongo Wakati ninakwambia Mungu anakuinua we unaona nini Wakati unakubaliana na mimi ukitoka nje hata mahali siko unasema ninainuliwa mimi maisha yangu yanabadilika Bwana anatenda kitu kipya utukufu wake uko juu yangu maisha yangu yanakuwa sawa ninashinda maadui wangu hata hii changamoto inayeyuka milima hii inasongeshwa ninapita kwenye maji mengi ninapita kwenye moto sitachomeka mimi hata waje elfu moja wataanguka kwa kushoto wakati elfu kumi wataanguka kwa kulia mimi ni shujaa mimi ni jasiri bwana ako na mimi bwana ananizingira na ua lake unasema nini kile unasema ndio kile unaona na hicho hicho ndio bwana atakupatia wakati mwingine uko na shida tokezea kama jasiri tokezea ni kama hauna tokezea ni kama una pesa Tokesea ni kama una magari. Tokesea ni kama wewe ni jasiri shujaa. Wachana na kuonyesha watu kwamba wewe una shida. Hawana msaada kwako. Oh. Hizi vitu zimekuja status na Facebook we post there. A man is going through problems. What, what is the problem with you? Do you know who you are? You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. You are a peculiar people. You are the light of God. You are chosen to show for this glory. You have a covenant child. You have been sent to set free those who are in prison. Na wewe ndio unashida ukituambia uko kwa prison. Come on. Mimi utaona nikikwambia napitia changamoto. Please forgive me. Achana na mimi. Na ndio sababu hata mkiniona niko sawa. Niko sawa. Hey. Because when I know who I am, I choose my words. Na usifikirie adui anasikia kile cha mdomo tu. Hata ile una print kwa WhatsApp na unaweka kwa Facebook. Na unaweka kwa status, hiyo ni yako. Hiyo ni mind yako. Na kile kilicho kwa akili yako ndio kenye Bwana anaona. Kwa Facebook ambia watu mimi jasiri angalia shujaa huyu ameinuliwa na Bwana Amen Wacha hii mambo una Halafu mnaweka wimbo Mungu wangu unajua sababu kwa nini niyapitia Sasa ni wewe unapitia peke yako kubali kupitia lakini ujue kwamba Bwana atakupa ushindi kubali kupitia lakini ujue Mungu ni mkubwa juu ya shida yako si ulikuwa unalia miaka mbili na hiyo shida iliisha mpaka saa hata unajiuliza sasa nilikuwa nalia nini eh? ile shida ya jana imekuwa ujinga leo ule boyfriend ulililia saa hii ni mlevi unashukuru Mungu Una, unashukuru Mungu unapitana naye na ulevi hapa unasema ai 
Mungu asante. Lakini <laughs> Uliomba kazi kwa kampuni. Ulipenda kampuni hiyo kabisa. Na Mungu hakukupatia. Akakupatia ingine ambayo si ukupenda. Lakini baada ya miaka tano kampuni ikafungwa. Unasema ai Mungu asante. Unaona wale walikuanga wanaendesha magari sasa wanakuja kwako. Wewe uko stable. Somebody say stable. Yaani hauna wasiwasi penye uko hakuna fununu kwamba inafungwa. Hakuna. Yaani uko stable. Wakati mwingine wapendwa. Prayer and fasting is very important. Lakini msiitumie kama uoga. Unaenda kufunga kwa sababu umeogopa. Vitu zingine ziambia haitatendeka kuwa na ujasiri. Enda kwa prayer and fasting ushukuru Mungu ukuwe na time yako na baba. Hapana kila prayer and fasting ni kama yani ni pahali pa uoga yani kumaliza uoga. Do you know wa Kristo tukiinuka kwa imani vitu zenye zitakuwa zinatendeka hata utashangaa. Kwa hivyo Mungu anaambia Abrahamu kwamba mahali unaona nimekupatia. Usisumbuke. Kwa hivyo kuna siri na kile unaona. Ah usiku wa jana nimeambia Bwana kuanzia leo nitaona mambo makubwa makubwa tu mimi sitaona vitu vidogo vidogo sitaona vitu vya hapa nitaona mambo ya mbele nitaona vitu vikubwa vikubwa ninaandaa njia ya baraka yangu ninaandaa njia ya ushindi wangu sitaona shida tena sijui kama uko na mimi uko na mimi uko na mimi tunapita tunaenda tunashinda tunainuliwa tunapromotiwa tunaenda mbali twende twende tusikae hapa hatukwami hapa twende wapendwa tuone ukuu wa Bwana twende kwenye miujiza twende kwenye baraka twende kwenye silver and gold mko tayari twende let's go wacha kujifinya finya hapa Angalia mtu mwenye anahubiri vizuri na ananiangalia anasema huyu anaongea nini? Look at your neighbor, mwambie shida yako ni nini? Amen. Now, tunapoangalia kitabu cha Numbers chapter 13 verse 1. Tunaona tena mfano mwingine. Mungu tayari ashaahidi wana wa Israeli na Musa kwamba nishawapatia nchi ya ahadi ya na ya Kanan si ukweli lakini kabla hawajaenda angalia kile Mungu anaambia Musa and the lord spoke to Musa say, Moses say send men to spy out the land of Canaan spying means let them go and have a view and see kwa hivyo Mungu ana tabia ya kusababisha mtu ambaye anatembea na yeye kuona vitu ambavyo ameahidi kabla hajavitenda watume Na wakati walipoenda walienda spice wangapi 12 Wakaenda vizuri wakaona inji 10 wakarudi Wakaambia Musa na wana wa Israeli tumeona majitu tumeona majitu makubwa 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 sisi sisi sema sisi tulikaa kama grasshopper kwa macho yetu na kwa macho yao ay 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 kwa macho yetu na kwa macho yao oh lakini wawili jasiri mmoja anaitwa nani Joshua eh na mwingine anaitwa nani Caleb wakaambia wana wa Israeli hapana hata kama ni majitu tuna uwezo katika jina la Mungu wetu wa kuingia kwenye hiyo inchi na kunyakua hiyo inchi sio ukuu wao sio ukubwa wa mili zao sio vitisho vyao ni Mungu wetu ambaye tumebeba wakati mwingine usiangalie uvitisho vya mtu usiangalie vile anakaa na pesa na anajua ana watu ana connection ni ukubwa wa Mungu wako ambao utaleta mabadiliko ni ukubwa wa uwepo wa Bwana utaleta mabadiliko somebody say ukubwa wa Mungu wangu Naweza kuwa mimi nikafupi lakini kuna ukubwa wa Mungu wangu unashinda ufupi wangu. 
Naweza kuwa mimi ni kadhaifu sijasoma lakini usichezee Mungu wangu akianza kunitetea mie ah akianza kunipigania vita vyangu mie ah akianza kuondoa maadui wangu eh hey! ukubwa wa Mungu wangu unaenda interview unapata watu na masuti wanaongea Kiingereza with Britain Britain accent good morning yeah i've also come unafikiria yeye ndiye anaenda kukufanyisha interview kumbe pia amekuja interview uh. sasa unasema mimi hapa sina langu bana wewe ile kibukusi imeingia kwa lugha yako ama kikuyu eh na ne, 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 ne. wanauliza swali unaongea kibukusu <laughs> papa wolori <yada. laughs> At, ati unasema oh sorry i'm saying what did you say <laughs> Baada ya wiki moja, hello. Hello. Is this Collins Imbunda? Yes. Uh, you did an interview with us? Yes. We are calling you to tell you good news that you have been selected. Come and pick your appointment later. You are like me? 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 Are you sure? Me? Sasa unataka at to celebrate na secretary hana time kama hiyo. Anakuzimia simu. Me, me, you jump up and down, you jump down, you jump in, you jump, you, hey! There is a time I, I did an interview, and now I call those ones who, who are successful. And I called a certain lady. I said, you are successful, come and pick. Hey! Nilisikia, ata akuzima simu. Alikuwa naruka, hey! Hey, hey, hey! Nilipata kazi, nilipata kazi! Nikazuye mazimu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Sasa acha nikusitue kidogo ninapomalizia. Ukienda katika the same book of numbers chapter 14 verse 36. Hebu soma tu hayo maandiko. Nataka tusome na wewe. Ujue kwamba kumbe watu ambao hawaoni vizuri hata Mungu hawapendi na Mungu huwaua. Now the men who Moses sent to spy out the land who returned and made all the congregation complain against him by bringing a bad report of the land men with bad eye see what god does those very men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before the lord ah go to verse 38 see this now verse 38 But somebody say but Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jehunan remain alive for of the men who went to spy out the land why did they remain alive eh because they saw life these others saw death saw evil they saw life they remained alive and they entered the land Did they take over the land or not? They took over the land. Did God give them victory or not? God gave them victory. But the ones who said we cannot, did they enter? No, they died. Na walikufa na plague. Mungu alisema hawa wakiingia kule watasababisha watoto wangu wasifate maandiko, wasifate kile kinataka. Unajua kuna vitu Mungu ataua katika maisha yako vyenye vinasababisha wewe usisonge mbele. At end ugo hapa tunaenda kuanguka wewe ndio utaanguka sio mimi Amen Yes Lazima wapendwa tuishi katika maisha haya na ujasiri na ndio sababu katika hili neno tunaona kwamba kumbe God hates bad reports God hates bad reports God hates evil reports God loves good report hata kama hali iko namna gani imani iliyo ndani mwake ikusaidie useme itakuwa sawa usuruhusu hali moja ikutishe mpaka ukae ni kama i am finished it is the blind eye that you have that has been bringing death in your life lakini Yesu alikuja akasema he proclaimed liberty he brought 
He proclaimed recovery of sight to the blind. Among the very important things that Jesus declared when he started his ministry, ni kwamba macho ya watu ya kaone. Kwa sababu wakati watu wanaona, wanapokea. Lakini adui naye hapendi watu waone. Kwa sababu wanapopokea, wanamshinda. Adui anataka watu washindwe. Na katika kushindwa, wanaanza kunena kushindwa. Wananena kifo, wananena kushindwa, wananena hawawezi kwenda mahali. By the same report, they are destroyed. Romans chapter 3 verse 22 says, The righteousness of God is revealed through faith in Christ Jesus to all and on all who believe. To all and on all who believe. The righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus to all and on all who believe. Somebody say to all and on all. Kwa hivyo hakuna mtu ambaye buwana anasema huyu hafai. Even those who fall. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. I started by saying that. But now, the righteousness of God has been revealed through faith in Christ Jesus to all and on all who believe. Kwa hivyo tumepungiki wa utukufu. Lakini buwana kupitia katika imani amefunua kwamba tunaweza kurudisha utukufu wa Mungu maishani mwetu katika kuamini Kristo Yesu kama mokozi wa maisha yetu tunapoamini utukufu ule wa kwanza unaturudia tunaanza kuishi maisha tofauti na ndio sababu hakuna limit ya baraka zako kama unaendelea kumwamini Mungu there is no limit even in the church no limit if your eyes were open, you will not be where you are. But you will be experiencing divine greatness of God in every area of your life. But now, see who you are now today. And when I'm talking about the glory of God, usiamini mungu leo na kesho unamukashifu. Usiamini buwana natenda leo alafu kesho ukiamuka kwa sababu ya haliflani, unaanza kunena, unaanza kusema, unajirudisha nyuma, Kumbuka kwamba unapo make up your mind kwamba unaamini neno la Bwana adui atakuja kukujaribu. Adui atakuja kusema si umesema kwamba wewe ni mshindi. Ataleta hali ambayo itakufanya ufikirie wewe ni bure. Kwa hivyo usikubali kusema wewe ni bure hata katika hiyo hali sema mimi ni mshindi. Mimi nitafaulu. Mimi nitainuliwa. Hii hali itapita tu. Bwana ako na mimi. It is well with me. It is well with the righteous. Hilo linapendeza mungu. Na bila shaka, it shall come to pass. Apostle Paul in the book of uh, Colossians, I mean Ephesians, chapter 118, he tells the Ephesians in Ephesus that you should pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his glory. Macho yako ya funguliwe. Ndiyo ujue buwana ametuitia nini. Na utukufu ambao uko nyuma ya jina la kristo ni nini. Ombeni macho yenu ya funguliwe. Na hii iwe ombiletu sisi wote. Kwamba macho yetu ya funguliwe. And God says in the book of Isaiah 61, Arise, shine. Somebody say, Arise. And do what? For why? Your light has done what? Has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Who should arise? I. Arise and what? For what has come? Your light. And what is the light? The gospel of Jesus. The name of Jesus. It has come. And when you arise and the light of God has come upon you, the light of the gospel of Jesus which is upon you, the glory of God is risen upon you. And then when you go to verse 2 of that book, the Bible says that 
deep darkness, a darkness has covered the earth. Behold, darkness has covered the earth, and deep darkness the people. But, but counsels. As much as we are living in darkness, a dark world, and deep darkness has covered people, somebody say, but for me. Somebody say, but for me. The Lord will rise over me. And his glory will be seen upon me. That means in the midst of darkness of the earth, for me, the Lord is risen upon me. And his glory will be seen upon me. Though I'm in the darkness, yet I'm in the light. So darkness is surrounding here, but me where I am, I'm in Agoshen. I'm in the light. I am covered by his glory. I'm enjoying the goodness of God. I am not seeing that darkness. Me, the glory, the Lord has risen. The Lord will arise over me. Do you believe that? Because of Jesus, may the Lord arise over you. And his glory be seen upon you. And that is why Jesus has proclaimed recovery of sight to those who are blind. Kuna sehemu ya maisha yako hufaulu ni kwa sababu there is darkness. Because your eyes are not seeing that victory. It could be you are not seeing. And that because you cannot receive from Father. Stand up on your feet.